I've already taken a look at all the reports linking Ralph Rangnick to Manchester United and whether or not he'd be a good replacement for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. What I'm going to do in this video after doing quite a lot of research is explain to you everything about his coaching philosophy, his style of play, the pillars that he bases his philosophy on, his role models, his formation, his tactics, everything he's learned as a sporting director. It's really a massively informative video to help you understand everything about Rangnick's coaching style, philosophy, tactics and formation and how that could be applied to Manchester United. So please consider subscribing by the end of the video, but this should really help you understand exactly why Rangnick has, I suppose, got so much respect in the industry after a long, long career, both in management and in director roles in a different level of the clubs. So let's start at the very beginning. What does Rangnick actually think makes a football coach? This is a very important place to start. What is the job of a football head coach or manager? To have a clear idea of how my team should play. This can be more the Pep Guardiola style or the Diego Simeone style or the Hansi Flick style or the Jürgen Nagelsmann style or the Jürgen Klopp style. Those are variations, different areas where Pep Guardiola is more the kind of coach who likes technical players, whereas Jürgen Klopp more likes the heavy metal band players, you know. But what they all have in common is that they exactly know how this kind of football they want to play, what it looks like. They have in their brains the video of the perfect game. They have it in their minds and on their minds. And the job of a football manager is to transform this idea of football into the heads, hearts, brains, veins of your players. Ralph, uh, honestly, by the end of this video, you're going to agree with me. He's a very, very impressive speaker. He knows what he's talking about. His knowledge base is clearly very broad. And that point there that he's making about the, the job of the football coach is to make, get that idea out of the football coach's head and, and embed it into the players. And it's exactly the biggest criticism that a lot of people have always said about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is that style has never been there. The overall philosophies of counter-attacking football and the DNA and the culture and the cliches that Solskjaer has applied haven't really translated into a style of play or a team that Manchester United, you can look at it and say, that's Manchester United. It's just not been the case. And when it comes to uh, Jurgen Klopp is somebody who's used as a as a point of reference for Ralph Rangnick because uh, Rangnick was a bit of a role model for Klopp. And he points towards the success of Klopp with certain areas at Liverpool as evidence of that coaching, of that getting the idea out of your head and into the players. They were not the kind of players that everybody said, wow, they are pressing machines. No. So all the things that happened at Liverpool was the job of the coach and his coaching staff. And nobody can really argue with it because of how impressive Liverpool have been over the last few years and the growth they've seen under Klopp and what's happening at United. And we want that. Everybody wants that. But if, if you're looking at that as the basis of, of what Rangnick really feels a football coach needs to be, this next bit, I found this part very interesting when he talks about motivation and how important it is for a football coach to be able to motivate. This is what I tell motivation. Motivation for me is a transfer of belief, conviction, idea of football. But motivation is a transformation of my idea. But in order to do that, you need to be aware what kind of football do you really want to play? Now, I'm not talking about a, bit, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, maybe a little bit of that, a little bit of pressing. I mean, come on, what is a little bit of pressing? A little bit of pressing is like a little bit of pregnant. <laughs> I mean, either you are pregnant or not. Either you want to play pressing or not. But not, please, not a little bit of pressing. Huh? But you know what I mean. The idea needs to be in your brains yourself first. In order to be able to educate, to teach, to develop your own team, you need to make sure what kind of football do I want to play. Huh? And this is what all the top coaches in Europe have in common. And I think this point here is particularly crucial for understanding where Solskjaer's ceiling has been, uh, because this ceiling has been exactly what Randnick is explaining there. I don't really truly feel that Solskjaer ever really has, in his time at Manchester United, had this just embedded style in his head. He goes, this is, this is what you're saying there. Let's like, close your eyes and you've got the perfect game. Solskjaer's perfect game would probably have been PSG away, maybe, um, in terms of sitting back on the counter-attack, hitting hard and fast. It's not particularly the United. United way is 
is about dominating. Maybe that's why Solskjaer struggled so much at home compared to away. Because that start in his head, the one that he's tried to transfer onto the players, is about that counter-attack and sit back, hit hard and fast on the counter, because that's what he can do. That's what he, that's what he wanted United to do. But what we've seen really in these last couple of months where things really have properly collapsed is United trying to play a different pressing system against Liverpool. Nobody really knew what they were doing. And it's obvious there that it's not something that really Solskjaer knew and understood in his head. So therefore, when he was trying to translate that to the players with the coaches, it didn't come through properly and it was all disconnected. So the points he's making here is, is about the clarity that a, that a coach has, the clarity in thinking to motivate, and there's no chance you can pass that on to your players if you don't have that understanding yourself. And going into a little bit more detail here, skipping on to the next point, Randnick goes in to discuss what are the three pillars of coaching as far as his own philosophy is concerned. And again, it's very interesting to listen to. I like to, to talk in this, in this case about the, the, the three C's in football that are highly important. Uh, the first one is uh, concept, the C for concept. Um, this means that we were trying to implement uh, a, a specific DNA into the club. Um, the headline of everything and the guideline was the style of football that we spoke about uh, earlier on. Uh, and this consistent orientation towards it in all areas was where we put all emphasis on in, from, from day one. Uh, the playing style with a high recognition value, even on a bad day, you could still, you should still be able to recognize the kind of football that we wanted to play. By doing that, we create a corporate identity in the whole club, not only with regard to the players, but also with regard to the coaching staff, even the fans in the end, identified themselves with the style of football that we were playing. And this, for me, was a very decisive factor. Um, and in the end, as I said, it creates identification within the, the, the squad, the players, the staff, and, and, and the fans. Um, the second C is competence. As I said earlier on, we were trying to find the best possible people for each job. Um, for, by do, for doing that, it helped me a lot that, that I knew where the best possible people were. Uh, the network allowed me to, to, to identify those people and know these people already. And in the end, it was my job to convince them to, to, to go on a mutual journey together with us in both clubs. So um, again, here, the key is to have a competent and excellently trained staff uh, in every position. Um, then we need to promote and challenge them. And on the other hand, we also need a constant benchmarking with the market leaders in other areas, in other leagues. Um, uh, this was the second C. The third one, obviously, is capital and cash. Um, I believe that it enables us, it enabled us the implementation of the philosophy to start with, but it doesn't by no means replace concepts and competence. And therefore, for me, it, it has, in a, in, a, in a way, a limited, it is a limited success factor. Now, I know that was a long clip, but he's really impressive to listen to. As I said, that's the main thing I've really got. Whether or not you think he's the right man for United, it, clearly he's very impressive and you can understand that from a long career. But the three C's he's talking about there in his own philosophy, concept, competence and capital. If you're looking at where Solskjaer has failed, I would say uh, concept is something that came in at the start. It was a bit cliche. He talked about the DNA and the culture, but these concepts were necessary because of what happened before with Mourinho. We'd lost all vision of that and United as a club were in complete disarray. So in terms of implementing the first C, I think it worked to a certain degree. Now, in terms of the philosophy of the football, it certainly fell short. And then when you go on to point B, number two, you look at competence and then you look at the standards of the coaching the people who are there supposedly implementing that concept, that's when you start to fall down because United have certainly had the capital and the cash. Solskjaer's have had that in, in plenty. So it's not as if we haven't been able to, obviously we didn't sign a defensive midfielder, but is that the reason that United have done this badly this season? No, I don't think it is. I don't think you can use it as an excuse for that. So it's very interesting here seeing Rangnick talking about the importance of those three Cs, specifically one and two, concept and competence, and both of them dovetailing each other. That's just, that's what hasn't happened at United. So again, if you're looking at somebody who can come in and bring that sort of structure and that sort of culture to the club, Rangnick clearly has got experience of doing it at multiple clubs in different leagues at both uh, a manager level and a sporting director level. As I said, he really is very impressive. The more you look into him and the more you hear him speak. 
But in terms of his actual football, let's move on to the next point where he discusses the actual style of play that he likes to see. And as I said, um, Jurgen Klopp, Ralph Ragnick was a role model for him. So in terms of their style, there are similarities, which he discusses here. I mean, the football, this, this very similar view on football is uh, a very proactive style, um, style of football. It's um, high pressing, counter pressing football, I would say fast, proactive, attacking, counter attacking, uh, counter pressing, exciting, and above all, also an entertaining style of football. Um, Jürgen, like myself, we like to press high. And if you watched yesterday's game against Man City, especially in the first half hour, you could see that Liverpool was trying to press very high with the back four almost on the halfway line. And this is uh, pretty similar to my approach. On the other hand, we do not, we are not big fans of square and back passes. Um, the goalkeeper should have the fewest contacts because in every league on the in the world, the goalkeeper is not the best player, football player in the in on the pitch. So for that very reason, he should not have the highest amount of contacts. So we do not like back passes to the goalkeeper, and neither do we like square passes. So Rangnick, there explaining his style. He, he's somebody who who appreciates pressing, appreciates intense football, appreciates energy inside the system rather would not pass backwards and go forwards. There's a lot of buzzwords here, the Manchester United fans. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I'll be that. And obviously, I'll be honest, you have to admire how Klopp has got Liverpool playing for the last few years. And Randnick does have similarities to that. Now, shout out to Total Football Analysis for, for this bit of information. But I took a look at their video and they were explaining how back in Hoffenheim days, he was using more of a 4-3-3 system. But over his career, if you're looking at the overall formations that he's used, he's used a 4-4-2 a lot but also slight variations on that as well with a 4-2-2-2 with two attacking midfielders, and that could certainly suit United. And also, he's used a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond as well. And then if you're looking at Leipzig days, he also has used a 3-5-2. Now, that goes to show that Rangnick over the years has adapted, has changed, and has evolved. Happy to use different formations in different situations. And if you're looking at the sort of role model for Rangnick, then you go back to Arrigo Sacchi, the Italian coach. He was a bit of an innovator of the pressing game out in Serie A. And Rangnick was considered one of those innovators inside the German league, moving away from the sweeper system to a pressing system. And again, that's why I say that he's held as a role model for Jurgen Klopp, somebody that Jurgen Klopp looked up to and saw the successes there and implemented that into what he had at Borussia Dortmund. Rangnick is an innovator. He might be old. He's like 62, 63. But over his career... He's brought sweeping changes into multiple clubs in multiple different situations, whether that's Hoffenheim and bringing them up from where they were or Leipzig out of nowhere, turning them into a Champions League knockout qualifying team. Um, Randnick's been at the core of many different projects at many different levels. And while he may not have brought titles and success, you cannot argue that he hasn't revolutionized and improved Hoffenheim and Leipzig and the Red Bull brand really overall. He's been crucial to that. And as I said, he really is impressive the more you see him speak. And these next few clips, what they show here is Ralph Ragnick is more than just a manager. And that's a, that's a key point I want you to take away from this video. Like taking this clip, for example, into how he would implement and plan these sorts of developments into the performances of the players. I mean, it's, I'm 100% convinced that you can plan uh, development that you can plan performance. I would not go as far as to say that you can plan success for a specific date, but what you can definitely do, and by that, by doing that, you can indirectly influence and also plan success. What you can do is, is plan development and performance and increase the level of performance. When you hear him speaking like that, as I said, he's speaking more from a sporting director sort of role in terms of planning, and development. It's not just all about direct coaching and, and the mentalities of the players, although that is a very important point that I do want to show here because, again, what we've heard from uh, Ragnick here is all about his coaching, all about his style. But how would he implement that into training? Listen to this one. I mean, in fact, all our trainings on the pitch, when we train tactics and strategy, our style of football, it's all about exaggerations. So we play with the so called provocational rules. Those rules force the player to play in a way that is even more difficult than the game on Saturday. 
So by that we try to train the brain. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, it's about overloading the brain and uh, trying to put the brain to learn and adapt in situations when you are under pressure regarding space and time. Mm -hmm. And it's about finding solutions in those situations in training so that in fact on game day, on Saturday, the players even think, ah, it feels easier than in training. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's most of the training sessions when we train tactically what our training is about. Ragnik there explaining how players would be, I suppose, overtrained during training to the point where it would make a game seem easier. And it's quite logical when you think about it, but it's very, very interesting to hear that sort of approach he has. And that's the thing I've really learned, I suppose, over the last few days, really researching into Ragnik. He's an extremely methodical man, but not in the same way that uh, Louis van Gaal was. I think uh, he strikes me as a better overall educator, uh, strikes me as a better overall teacher. And I, uh, rather than being an authority, an authoritarian presence in terms of his voice and his diction and how he speaks to people. He seems to be a very good motivational speaker, somebody that somebody else can learn from very easily because, yeah, he's got that he carries that air of confidence in everything that he, that he is saying. And, and I found it very impressive, I'll be honest. Now, I know I've said the word impressive about 100 times so far in this, in this video, but honestly, it is impressive. But this, this final clip here, Questions could be asked about Ralph Ragnick's ability to coach Manchester United's biggest players. He's worked at Hoffenheim, he's worked at Leipzig, he's worked at Salzburg, he's worked in different roles in side clubs too. But could he come to Manchester United and do it with Ronaldo, with Bruno, with Pogba? Listen to this little snippet here on him speaking about players and player mentalities, because that's a crucial aspect in terms of United's big name players. Yeah, For me, mentality means the talent of the personality and the character of a player. And all those players who have this mentality are never content. They are trying to get better every day in all the relevant aspects. No matter if it's uh, tactical training, if it's physical training, if it's nutrition, if it's how, what, how can I make use of our sports psychologist. All the relevant elements, players who have the top mentality are never content, are trying to get better every day. So that bit there, Rangnick understanding the mentality of a top level player and what it means to be in that sphere of quality as a player. So yeah, look, overall, I know I've mentioned it a hundred times, but I swear to God, I'm really extremely impressed by everything that I've researched into Ralph Ragnick. And the more I look into it, the more I look at him and say, wow, okay, I could see how he could come and actually properly implement a structure at Manchester United. And you could argue that coming into Manchester United would be an extremely difficult job for him but it wouldn't be any more difficult than this. So in the end, we agreed after two, two more days that I will become the sporting director of both clubs. I still lived in Bagnang near Stuttgart and I was sporting director of two different clubs in two different leagues in two different countries. So he was being sporting director for Red Bull Leipzig and Red Bull Salzburg at the same time with two leagues and two different countries. And he managed that. And look how well Leipzig and Salzburg have done. Ragnik clearly is a very impressive man. Some people might say, oh, well, Mate, he's, if he's that impressive, why is he out in locomotive Moscow? Don't know, I'll be honest. But he's been linked with the Manchester United job. Reports today actually suggest that Man United are distancing themselves away from him because he might not be easy to work with. But what I'm seeing here is that over his career, at various different levels, both in management and at a club level, a board level, he has impressed. He knows exactly his philosophy. He knows exactly his style. And it seems to me like he could be a very good educator and motivator. And that's an important thing, the educator, because it's all good and well being someone like Jose Mourinho and trying to implement your style into something, but you can jar against a lot of players. It seems like Rangnick clearly has a real wealth of experience of implementing his style in different clubs at different levels and understanding the necessities for each club and how they change. I'm very, very, very impressed by what I've seen from Rangnick in the research that I've done. Would he be a, a good short-term interim solution until maybe the summer and then maybe Ten Hag? That sounds like a dream situation. And it probably won't happen because, you know, this is Manchester United. But what's your opinion on Rangnick? Hopefully this video has helped you understand the roots of his philosophy, his style, his coaching, his tactics, his formation, and the reasons that he has those beliefs in all of those. For me, it's really helped me. <laughs> Honestly, it has, doing this research. So... Please drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Please consider subscribing if it did help you. Share it around with other Reds. And as I said, are there any other managers you'd like me to look at in this sort of depth? I've looked at Rangnick and I know we can speak about Zinedine Zidane, maybe Brendan Rodgers. 
maybe Ten Hag too. I'm going to make this probably a series over the next couple of weeks. It's the international break. United might not be doing anything with Solskjaer, but it doesn't mean that we can't have conversations about what could come next. And for me, you have to talk about Ragnik, certainly after seeing all of this.